All right, so at this point we've got uh, a new product, the chocolate chip cookies, and it has a variation. Let's do another variation just to, to uh, understand it a little bit more, and uh, then we'll make some other products. But have you been noticing the shortcuts that are up here? They're, they're a lot more useful than having to go back to the dashboard and then to the right screen. Um, so we'll go back again. New product. And for this type of product, we can do the, uh, let's try sugar cookies. Sugar cookies. Uh, product tag. Um, th these, remember these tags, what they're for, think of them in terms of what people might be searching for on your site. So let's just say someone is searching for fun. So sugar cookies, I'm going to tag it as fun. And I can do three to five of them. But think of terms in what, in what people would be searching for. So put yourself in their shoes and what would people be searching for on your site. Uh, maybe this has, yeah, maybe this has sprinkles. So we can do sprinkles. Product categories then are cookies again. We don't need to set a price here because our variations will take, take over that. Under variations, we'll use the same batch, but let's say, just for differences, let's say that this, that these sugar cookies are only being sold in groups of 6 and 12. So you can say, okay, then the 3 cookie variation is not available. 12 cookies, 6 cookies. It's still going to say batch, and then 12 or 6. So generate variations. You've got 12 cookies, 6 cookies. And as I said, then you have the control to even fine-tune this. So let's say also, just for something different, that these are also slightly more expensive. So 6 cookies will be $6. There's no 50 cent saving there. And then the, the 12 will be back to $11. So instead of the $2 savings, just $1, still a savings. Uh, but uh, I'm showing you here that you can fine-tune your products pretty pretty well. And I know that when I deal with some of these clients, uh, some of these changes are, are quick, especially when they raise their prices, and some of them take a while because there could be a product, like for example, that, that restaurant, uh, they can sell the combo. That one's a nightmare to do because the combo is a mixture of two variation groups. There's the variation of what kind of taco and what kind of side dish or whatever. And so then there might be three items in one and three in another. So then you have to set those, you know, 12 different prices because those variations add up to, to different combinations. If I decide that I don't want the salt in there, I could want three back Yes, if you hover over the list of items right here, you'll see that 12 cookies then gets trash, and you can remove that, you can move the tool. delete the whole area, I mean, the whole batch? No, this only applies to this one cookie, this one product. This is managing the variations of this product. In order to delete the original variation, we would go back to the variations screen under products over here. So those are safe. I'm going to save those variations, and then I'm going to save the product. Uh, that is, publish the product. And then I'm going to view the product.
previously we set we had the we added the option of three products per page we added pagination that was under the settings screen now when I visit the products page which reminds me it says shop here but it still says products page there we'll need to edit that a little later but now we have three products birthday cake wedding cake chocolate chips and then next page two and it's at the top and the bottom. We set that also. Pagination at top and bottom of the page. You can have it only at top, only at bottom. I personally like top and bottom um, pagination because if, I, if I'm a returning user and I know that it's on page 3, um, I don't want to scroll all the way to the bottom to select next page. If it's at the top, it helps me navigate easier. Again, it reduces friction. As I talked about previously, friction is anything that slows down your user's progress. And the more friction that there is, the more likely that the user will give up and go elsewhere. So in any event, this new product has gone over my limit of three per page, so it's on the next page. If we have more, we will see page one, two, three. It's not going to show all page one through 40 there. There will be a limit. It will show a few in the next and previous and so forth. But if we've only got two pages so far. If we select next or last, it takes you to the next page. Next page is sugar cookies, product options, price from six dollars, batch, please select. I'll do twelve. Price eleven. Add to cart. Go to checkout. And then this is what I've got. It still remembered those sugar uh, the chocolate chip cookies from earlier today. Price 10 total, price 11 total there, and then you start to get your, your prices adding up here. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, it says to where it's total zero, zero. Why is the price let me take a quick look. So you're seeing here on the checkout screen it's still saying zero? No, no, no. Well, the total price says total shipping and the total is zero. Oh, did mine say zero also? I think so. Yeah, mine says zero also for some reason. Uh, hmm, let me see about here. Calculating. I'm going to click calculate shipping price. Well, that's that's total shipping, and then there's total oh, price. When we look at editing some code, we'll deal with that because right now this column here is way too thin; it's cutting off that word, confusing people. So again, some of this customization requires code. That's one of the things we'll talk about in this class because things work really well out of the box most of the time, but sometimes there's this little bit, this little. Um, rough around the edges that we need to fix, and that's going to require code. And so if you don't have experience in editing code, it's still going to be a bit of a challenge. But if you do have some experience, you'll see that that opens up the, the doors for you to really customize your site. Well, we'll, we'll be getting to that soon, but I want to edit a few, a few other things. Um, For example, in the menu, we called it shop, but on the page, it's still called products page. Normally, whatever you type in the title of the page is what appears in the menu. If you change one or the other, though, they might not synchronize. I changed the name in the menu, but then that did not change the name on the actual page. Sometimes that happens. So in order to edit that, I've got a shortcut here. I'm looking at the products page. Let's do this. If you're not, click on Shop so that we're looking at the products page. And at the top, you've got Edit Page. We can find the page also by going <coughs> back to the dashboard, going to the pages, finding the right page. But I really like <coughs> that we have the edit page button 
built into just about every screen of your WordPress site. If you want to edit something, just navigate to it on the front end, click Edit Page. That's the fastest way to edit something. Let's do that. Edit Page. Then it takes you to edit the page, and that up there it switches to View Page. So a quick way to go back and forth viewing and editing. And notice the only thing that shows up in the body of that page is this, what is known as a short code products page. That one code that was put in there for us basically makes the whole shop come, come to life with all its columns and rows and all of that stuff. Short code. We'll look at some other ones. But the title is up there, products page. So in the menu it's called shop, but internally it's still called products page. We can easily change that to say shop. And that may or may not then change the permalink, the pretty link. I, if I change the title to be safe, I then also change the permalink by clicking that edit button. Because it may or may not change it, and I don't want to deal with, with doubt. What's that? Not. Yeah, so I don't want to deal with that. So I've got, I change the title here, and then I'm going to click edit and change that to also say shop. That way I know I changed I would use definitely all lowercase, definitely no spaces, and I would recommend instead dashes instead of underscores. Um, that's what we had a moment ago. It said shopping dash cart, and I recommend the dashes. No, I said products dash page, didn't it? So the title is going to be shop, the permalink is going to be shop, and then in the menu I call it shop. They don't have to be the same. I could keep it called shop in the permalink, but I could call the title up here our amazing shop. That's fine. And then even in the menu I could simply call it something else. I could call it the shop. These names don't need to line up. What I would pay attention to the most, though, is what is the name of the address. That's the one that the search engines will care about a little bit more, because that's the direct address to your particular page, and therefore when someone searches for something, hopefully your page will appear because it's properly labeled. Let's click Update. So now if I visit site, instead of the, uh, well, yeah, view page, same thing. I'll click at the top view page. My address bar says WordPress slash shop, and the title of the page itself is shop. Now that synchronizes with the menu item name. Any questions on that? If you click like there is a page not found. No. Well, it shouldn't. Uh, that has to do with our rewrite module. Did anyone also get page not found? Hmm. That's odd because I do see the correct title. <clears throat> Let, let's do the well. Let me do this, and then I'll see if this works. I'm thinking I need to go back to my settings. So let me try this first. Uh, settings, permalink. Save these permalinks again. Back to visit site. Back to the shop. Birthday cake and it worked. Okay, that's odd. Okay, so here's what I did. Wherever you're at, go back to the dashboard. There's no quick link to it. If you're not already there, go back to the dashboard. Scroll down on your menu, uh, hover over settings, and select permalinks. We, we need to, we changed a structural thing here. This, the whole shop was under the 
products page link, permalink. We change that, so we kind of need to wake up WordPress in a sense. So we'll go back to settings, permalink. We don't need to change anything here, but the default should be under post name. Simply click save changes. We didn't save anything, but we didn't change anything. Just confirm that this still says post name, save it, and now it should work. We kind of woke, woke up. We, we, we've woken it up. Woke up is not a real word, is it? We've woken it up. We've woken up the links, sort of. So save that, go back and confirm that those links work. And that would be my pro tip for if suddenly your page links are broken, just try that. Go back to your permalink, save it, test it, it'll probably fix it. If, if that still doesn't, if on your site that's still not quite working, you might have to take a little bit more time to do some research to figure out your, <laughs> your problem, maybe um, look up the question over at the... Um, I'll mention a couple of places where you can get tech support for for WordPress in a bit. So I've got my shop. And at the moment, all four of my products show up on the one shop page. What I want to do is I, I want to have a shop button, but then if I've got a drop down, I then want to show here cookies, cakes, and pies. I want to have this, this, the kind of product in the menu itself, and a person can go directly to cookies and only see cookies. Right now, a person would see all of my products at once. Let's hover over the new item and select page. What we'll be doing is we will be creating a page as a placeholder for those product categories. So this will only work if our products have been categorized, and I said that from day one. Last week we made some categories, we used them last time and today. So we'll need a page as a placeholder for a category. So hover over New and select Page. The name of the page, the title of the page, will be Cookies. Just like we saw in the regular products page, that, in a sense, is a placeholder for all my products. The products page is a placeholder for all my products. This cookies page will be a placeholder for all my cookies. And the way we do that is with a short code. Here on our insert bar, at the very end, we have a couple of little credit cards here. This is not available unless you have the WP Commerce plugin. Hover over it just so you get the pop-up that gives you its name. This is called the WPSC description. But anyway, click on the little credit cards. WP Commerce. Category, Products, Premium Upgrades. Select Category. Select the category you would like to display with a short code. No category or cookies. So this is going to then show all cookies on this page. I can fine-tune it by saying number of products per page. This would override what I wrote in the settings, where in the settings I'm saying show three products at a time. I could say for cookies, show ten cookies at a time. I'm not going to change that, but I could. What else? Sale products. Add all sale products. This will add all your products you have on sale to the page. So if I've got 20 cookies, seven of them are on sale, and I only want to display the ones on sale, I could set that. <coughs> Add the sale cookies to this page only. I've also got Add Sale Products by Category. This, uh, this will add all your products you have on sale from select category. Um, the difference between this will add all your 
add all of your products you have. On. Okay, I see. This one will add all the products of all the categories that are on sale. So you get the sale page. Just the sale page, exactly. Um, or the second one is I only want to show the cookies that are on sale on this page by selecting the second option. I won't select any of these, but that's how you can further fine-tune the screen. The only thing I did here was I selected, I want to show the cookies category on this page, nothing else. Notice you can show individual products, that's pretty cumbersome I think. Um, but anyway, just one product category, insert. The short code says WPSC underscore products category ID equals 9. Because everything in WordPress is defined by a number in the database, there is a number in the database 9, which is mine. Yours might be 7 or 12 or whatever, it doesn't matter. The short code will point to your particular category that you made on your site. And the point is that this cookies page is a placeholder to display all my cookies. So this is a two-step process. Make a page, add the short code for the category. Step one. Step two is then we need to add this page to the menu. Because remember previously, we've seen that menu items, pages do not add themselves automatically to the page menu. So let's publish this. We've got a cookies page and a short code for the cookies category. Publish it. We need to go edit the menu. Now to add this page to the menu, we don't have the you don't have the short cut. Remind me, where do I go in WordPress to go edit my menu? Appearance. Under appearance. Under Appearance, Menus. And there's my current menu on the left side here under Pages, most recent. So I need to add the Cookies page placeholder to the menu. So select cookies, click on add to menu. And it adds it to the very end of the menu, but actually not really linked visually to your shop. It's not indented, so it's its own top menu item. I want cookies to be part of the shop drop down. I'm going to drag cookies. Uh, I think I'll put it right below the shop. And I decided um, that I'm going to have the cookies and the cakes and the pies and then the other items. Check out your account transaction results. You have to remember to save this menu. Go back to visit site and see how it works. So I'm going to save that, visit site, click the drop down on shop and now I've got cookies. And if I visit cookies, I should only see the two cookie products I have at the moment. All right, did that work for everyone?
I noticed something here you probably did too. I'm looking at my cookies page. Here's some products. And then at the very bottom it says leave a reply. Someone can leave a comment. You may or may not want this, but usually you don't see comments on the top level of a section. You might see leave a comment or leave a review on a product. The default is that WordPress allows uh, any page, any screen um, on your site, uh, the ability for people to, to leave a comment. That's really good for blogs and such. That could help your SEO, but it's not useful for, in this, in our case, for example here, it's not useful for a person to leave a reply, to leave a comment on a top-level category. You may decide to leave it. It might work in your case. That's fine. It's not going to be a detriment. I think this is more of a user experience question. Um, will a person need to or want to leave a comment here? Most likely not. Um, so what I want to do is deactivate the ability for people to leave a comment on this page. There's a couple of ways to do it. Uh, I'll show you the way I think that is more useful because it's faster. Let's go back to the dashboard. And back to our pages. All pages. To the dashboard, to the pages. And here's my pages. Here's my page of cookies. If you hover over the page of cookies, you have the option quick edit. You have edit and quick edit. Edit will give you that full page of all of those options. Quick edit gives you some fast options. So select quick edit. And on the right side, you should see allow comments, yes or no, on or off. So I'm going to say I don't want to allow comments on that particular page, so turn it off and click update. And now we've removed the ability for that page to have comments. Under quick edit. What you can also do is, let's say you have multiple pages you want to change the same option for. Let's say about us and shop. You, you should be able to see that you can turn on the check mark there next to more than one page. And then at the top here you have bulk actions, edit. So you can select more than one page, select both edit, apply, and then to as many as you've selected, you will apply the same options. Here, comments, don't allow. If you selected too many, it shows you here, okay, never mind, don't change the shop. So these are the pages you're editing, these are the things you're editing. Notice you cannot change every single thing about them, but these are some of these global options that you can set for a page, for multiple pages. So I'm going to say do not allow comments for these three pages, update, and now those three pages no longer have options to comment. So the big idea was to create a page as a placeholder for categories. Um, try now on yourself, by yourself first, now add another page for the category of 
cakes and pies. I did it once together. Try to see if you can do it on your own. Remember the secret was that little credit card button. So make a page and add the short code for pies and cakes. Try that on your own first and then I'll do it in a moment. set up featured image there that is more appropriate so it doesn't show us twice.
so it's not doing anything of the size of a difference. Which picture did you choose to show where? All right, so very briefly, I will create a new page. This will be called Pies. In the text of this product page, I'm going to click the, the little credit card category chooser and select the category Pies, Insert. publish. While I'm here I'll add another page. I have to add these two to the menu so I might as well create them both. Did you forget about that part? You created them but you still have to add them to the menu. And then uh, cakes. Add the cakes category. publish and then we need to go over to the appearance menu and add the cakes and the pies to the menu they don't show up automatically remember there is an option right below the menu automatically add new top-level pages to this menu that would add the newest pages that you created to the menu, but as a top-level item. You're going to need to go back in to edit it anyway if it doesn't put it in the right place. So if I turn on that option, it would automatically add cakes and pies to my menu, but they would not be sub-menu items. I would have to come back and edit the menu anyway. And usually I don't have that on because it's really not as useful as you would think. It's better to realize, oh, I forgot to add it to the menu, add it. Then have this adding every single new page you create, especially if you're doing advanced stuff like creating landing pages. If you're working with landing pages with a, with a social media campaign or an email campaign, landing pages are pages that, you cannot, that your users cannot get to unless they follow a tweet or a Facebook post or an email. So you have them land on that page from a specific direction. If, if I'm letting those pages add themselves automatically, then they're no longer that exclusive content that I was setting up for the email user or for the Twitter user, so I don't recommend using this option. Question? Um, when you say landing pages, so you're talking about building uh, those HTML pages, um, loading them up without any links to them, the only link it's going to be viable for one that's uh, coming from your social media, which is from the email link. Yes. So, but you don't have to create it in HTML. You just create a page here in WordPress. Remember, WordPress lets you create the whole thing. So you create that page, you design it in WordPress, but you don't add it to any menu item. And then through that email or tweet or whatever, that link on your tweet takes you there. That's the same way you build it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you heard about that term before, landing pages. Well, that just means a page that a user can land on, however you create it. Here in WordPress, WordPress, I would create a brand new product called Sunday Sale. Not link it anywhere in my menu. And then only advertise it on Twitter or my email list or Facebook or whatever. That way I can track, okay, I got 75 hits and then I can go into more detail and see, oh, most of that traffic came from Twitter as opposed to Facebook. So then I can decide, this is more advanced stuff regarding social media, I can decide, oh, my Twitter is working really well, better than my Facebook. So maybe I'll focus more of my efforts on Twitter. Or I can decide, well, I want to bring up those Facebook numbers, so I'll spend more time on Facebook. Or I can decide, well, that email list is not working at all, so I can either give it up or try to get more people on my email list. Again, that's more advanced stuff, but the point is you can create these landing pages in WordPress as your landing page, as your end result of a tweet or a YouTube video or an email blast or maybe on your business card that you give people, there's a link there that you can only 
get to through your business card. That's an incentive. You know, if you're trying to get hired as a as a cake decorator, you're giving out this business card that has your contact info, and then you can t tell them, make sure you follow that link for 10% off your next wedding cake. And that will then be taking them to the landing page that you can only get through through that business card. Notice some advanced stuff about menus is we've been displaying pages. There's a pages category here. We can be uh, dealing with displaying products you know, individual products. This is very cumbersome because I could have about 500 products. It doesn't make too much sense to create a page and only show one. I mean, it doesn't make much sense to add only one item, one product to the menu. But you could do that. You could have a product that is, you know, a service. And then add that one product to the menu. You can be very creative with these menus. Think about the menus that you see on other websites and how can I do that? most likely you will be able to do it by creating custom pages. What else? Custom link. Okay, this is a good one. We didn't get, uh, I believe we mentioned it, but last month. A custom page is, I can put in any web address here, give it a name, add it to the menu. So it doesn't have to be a page within my site. It could be a page uh, over on... It could be a YouTube video. I could get the link to my YouTube video paste it right here and add the name, add the text here, our commercial. And, they, and someone clicks on it and it goes to view that commercial. Or I can get my YouTube channel right here and right here, our commercials. Someone clicks there, it goes to our YouTube channel, they could view all our commercials. I don't have to have my videos uploaded to my site, taking up my bandwidth and server space. I could take up YouTube's server space and bandwidth and have people directed to there through a custom link. We can add categories. These are categories in general, not product categories. Product categories are here. There's a difference. Product categories only exist because we've got the WP Commerce plugin, and categories are built into WordPress related to the blog. Product tags, variations, I suppose you can have a page of variations, a menu item, uh, and then also tags. That's not You can always go back to products, variations, and that's where you go back to rename, delete, etc. Under appearance, variations. No, under products. Sorry, under products and then variations. 